we do not break faith with those who died to bring peace to the world, to commit ourselves once again to the struggles against evil, the struggle against the very good things that lead to war in the first place. God is our refuge and strength, a very pleasant help in trouble. This I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, just to love, mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? We meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to work in patience and faith for the reconciliation between nations and all people may together live in freedom, justice, and peace. We pray all who are bereaved, disabled, and pain continue to suffer the consequence of fighting the terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow for those who are lives in the world war and the conflicts of past and present have been given and taken away. Shall we sing the first hymn, The Two for the Lands? Shall we all rise to sing this hymn? lesson is read to us. The gospel is taken from the gospel of according to Saint Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 to 12. Matthew Five, beginning from the first verse. The Sermon on the Mount. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. The Beatitudes. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, 
for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets and who were before you. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We come to the incredible courage and sacrifice of the generation of the Indian Armed Forces, the men and women who have given their lives to protect the freedom that we enjoy today. From trenches of the First World War, our armed forces have proved time and again that they are the bravest of the brave and the very best what it means to be an Indian. We have never fully repaid the debt we owe them. But we can stop in our busy lives, stand and remember, honor what they have given for us and thank them for what they continue to do for us every day. And I pay tribute to the armed forces for all the support that they provided for our servicemen and women, our veterans and their families, and for their tireless work for so many years to encourage the nation to remember. While we are in a park or in a cinema hall or watching cricket or football, our servicemen and women are out there day and night fighting in the heat and dust, putting their lives on the line for us. That's the true character of the Indian forces, which we have so incredibly proud. So today we stop to say thank you and to remember those who are no longer with us, but whose sacrifice and valor will be honored long after they are gone. Why do we remember and what do we remember for? We remember partly because things trip us up, pulling us backward in time, often painful to recall someone who you loved and lost. It is on their birthdays and time of Christmas and the smell of the fresh bread and the sound of a waterfall. It can be when the weather turns towards winter and the season is full of ending or like today when the poppies are worn a part of our past comes back to us. To remember is to give a part of legs, arms, heart and soul reality and present in the present context. Remember, remembrance is not just saying, oh yes, I remember, and then doing or drifting away from that memory. It is to pause and ponder and to reflect and to think. It is about to live mindfully as the Buddhist wisely teaches us. In the sense to remember a person is to bring back back fully to mind, it is to recall and to turn and the phrase, the angel of the head, the humor and kindness, the darkness and the trouble, all of it, and the context. When we remember warfare in truth, it is not just heroism and victoria, victory, but also brutality, boredom, terror, dreadfulness, stupid waste of life. And it is the selfless act, the moments of astounding courage. It is personal goodness breaking out repeatedly in the false strand, evil and failure of humanity. To remember is not merely to repeat, but to learn from the past. It has been said that we should fight wars itself, not wars after wars. Those who have given their lives did not so believe in that 
they would have bring a better, a fairer, a more peaceful world. Every time we send it, troops off to fight, we deny our dead their hope. We squander their blood when we do ceaseless work for peace and justice from which the peace springs. When we hear the Icarus do this in remembrance of me, it is an invitation to make a new world, to build a kingdom of heaven upon earth where the swords are beaten into plowshares, the poor are lifted up, the mighty are cast down, and each one of my sitting beneath the vineyard or fig tree at a peace and unafraid. To remember is to grow wiser. It is hard to grow wise alone, to be more than you alone can be. You need to be wisdom, we need the wisdom stories of those who lived their life before you. We learn from their mistakes and from their successes. Mothers and fathers who sat down each evening with the children around a small kitchen table for supper, or the conversation that together we much to teach a hurried, weird, electric world in a desired direction. To better direction, the parable of the talent tells us we don't just get our lives to sit on them, but to do something for God with them. We are not given freedom just to enjoy it, but to make grow for us. That means that two words, freedom and justice, which enhances lives for our other rather than bettering the lives of those who are at home. We are called to build communities of earth all over it, not just in own private corners. To remember is a serious work. It means to lift up into the God's presence to those you remember and love. To do, it is to be done with great honesty and it is to be done with a sense of responsibility for who and what we are drawn from who went before us. They have passed a torch to us and we carry it forward. We are called to the screen. We are to, we are to carry forward the dignity and gentleness, the courage, the sacrifice, the longing of justice and the hunger for peace and above all the vision for a better life for all people and the created order. We are called to pick up the torch to make this world a world of which, which our God would be proud. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called children of God. Nevertheless, today, as we are reminded and a time for commitment, recommitment, we shall remember them. So every day, at going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Let us pray. Let us join in the responsive prayer. I may request the congregation to respond. After each prayer, hear our prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the leaders of the nations that you will guide them in the ways of freedom, justice, and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who bear arms on behalf of the nation, that we may have discipline and discernment, courage and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm that you will turn the hearts of all to kindness and friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wounded and the captive, the grieving and the homeless, that in all their trials they may know your love and support. Lord, in your mercy,
Ab Jalushan. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us to remember the cost of war and to work for better tomorrow. And as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I request the congregation to stand up, please, for the act of remembrance. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those whom we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of humanity. They shall grow not old as we that are left to grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Congregation may please be seated. <coughs> Shall we all stand in silence?
Let us pray. Ever living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As we, as we pay our respect to the souls that lay down, we'll have the wreath laying ceremony. Uh, it'll be by the First, by the consulate members representing the country. It'll be by, next will be by veterans and then the serving officers of the three defense services. I request Mr. Evo D. Witt, Consul General of Netherlands. I request Mr. James Godber, Consulate of Britain, Head of the Mission, Deputy Head of Mission. I request Mr. Kenneth Wong, Senior Trade Commissioner, Consulate of Canada. I request Mr. Walker Basher, Council Officer, Consulate of Germany.
we'll have the veteran officers for Indian Army, Indian Navy, and Indian Air Force. I request Colonel George Matthew for the Indian Army. I request Rear Admiral Alan O'Leary for Indian Navy. I request Wing Commander Peter Emanuel for Indian Air Force. We'll have the serving officers. I request Colonel Jacob Freeman for the Indian Army. I request Captain Christopher John for in the Indian Navy. I request Air Vice Marshal D. Watsa for the Indian Air Force. I request Brigadier Jose Abraham for CMP Center and School. I request Brigadier T.S. Mann for AC Center.
On behalf of St. Mark's Cathedral, I request Major General D. Rajan. On behalf of the NCC Directorate, Kerala and Goa, I request Air Commodore B.S. Kanwa. On behalf of the Karnataka and Goa sub area, we have Lieutenant Colonel Santosh Vincent. The history of the Battle of Kohima. The Japanese started their attack on Kohima at 4 a.m. on 4th April 1944. At that time, Kohima had about 1,500 men against 12,000 Japanese troops who continually attacked the small contingent of the Commonwealth forces. However, the Allied forces successfully held their ground until reinforcements arrived. The battle witnessed fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat between opposing forces. Historians wrote about the battle. Nowhere in World War II, even on the Eastern Front, did the combatants fight with more mindless savagery. There were heavy casualties on both sides. The Commonwealth forces prevailed and forced the Japanese to retreat in defeat. The battle was the turning point of the Burma campaign, part of the Southeast Asian theater of World War II. The Japanese defeat in this battle was the largest up till, until that time. According to the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, which maintains this cemetery, amongst many others in the world, there are 1,420 Commonwealth burials of the Second World War at this cemetery and a memorial to an additional 917 Hindu and Sikh soldiers who were cremated in accordance with their faith. In 2013, the British National Army Museum voted the Battle of Kohima as Britain's greatest battle. The epitaph carved on the memorial of the Second British Division in the cemetery has become world famous as the Kohima epitaph. It reads, when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. Shall we all stand for the 
out of commitment. Let us commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service. Will we strive for all that makes for peace? Will you seek to heal the wounds of the war? We will work for just future for all humanity. Merciful God, we offer to the fears in us that have not yet cast. May we accept the hope that you have placed in our hearts of all people. We live in our lives of justice, courage, and mercy through Jesus Christ, risen Redeemer. Amen. Shall we sing the hymn, Abide With Me? God grant 
to you a living grace, to the departed rest, to the state and all people, unity, peace, and God, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen. We shall remain standing for the national anthem. Thank you for being with us. Please join us for refreshments and some coffee just behind the cathedral. Thank you.